We need you, Lord. For your word said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. I love that text because he starts off saying, if my people, I, I need every believer in this house that believe that, that there's a God in heaven that looks down low and it's your God to give God praise. Come on, give God some praise in here. Come on, magnify the Lord in here. Hallelujah. Everyone standing. I'm gonna have uh, I know all the praise team may here, but we got a couple of them. They're gonna be singing at the yesterday was a real hot day. We're live. God bless everybody that's watching us via Facebook Live. Hallelujah. I want y'all to put y'all comments in those comment sections that y'all y'all that are watching. I first, me and our first lady, we want to thank everyone for participating, helping out, volunteering, and being on their post, doing their jobs. But I do want to say this right here. That heat destructs it interrupts a whole lot of stuff. Mentally, our bodies get uncomfortable. And what the enemy does, that he'll come through what you're uncomfortable at, and he will try to cause destruction, habit. But here's the thing. He, he, he's, I've always had a strategy. When you mind your business, and focus on your task at hand. The enemy is going to try, try, and try. But I want to show you something. The thing you got to learn how to do as believers and Christians, what a lot of us got to learn how to do as believers and Christians, is how to learn how to deny the enemy access. Access. Because when we allow the enemy access, when, when, and he'll come in and he'll wreak havoc, wreak havoc spiritually and mentally. And a lot of us, he, he, would, he would cause a lot of us to come out of character. But somebody say, but God. Come on, somebody give God praise. I, I wanted to say that, hallelujah. But I want to thank everybody that stayed in character under all that heat, under all that strain. Somebody say, God, you did it again. God, you did it again. God, you did it again. Hallelujah. As we're standing, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we thank you for being able to feed this community with love, life, kindness, and everything that came from you. I thank you, Lord, that there was no accidents, there was no incidents. 
I thank you, Lord. There was more joy. Come on, somebody. There was more joy and peace in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Then the enemy can even comprehend. The enemy couldn't even comprehend how much peace was in the atmosphere. So God, I'm praying today that those book bags and those gifts will continue to bring light to each individual that was there on yesterday. I pray today, God, for the people in this community, for the ones that has been counted out as a lost. I pray that God, that woman, that man, that people have shut the doors on. I pray that today, God, that that door is being reopened and the enemy's weapons are being dismantled. I pray, God. I, I need some prayer saints today because... I just feel, God, that it's a lot of us, it's a lot of us, our children are dealing with things that they are keeping secrets. There are people that are dealing with things that they haven't even uh, exposed to other people yet. Lord, I want to thank you for their healing. I thank you for them being delivered off drugs and alcohol. I thank you, God, that their mental condition is being restored right now. I thank you, God. Look, Pastor Charles, we got to ask God to remove the taste out of the mouths. We got to, we got we see... It's, it's, it's in the taste. It's in, it's in the taste. It's in what they're like. We're asking God to remove the taste. Somebody say move. Come on, somebody say move, Lord. Come on, somebody say move, Lord. Somebody say move, Lord. I, see, I, I hear y'all saying it, but I, I, I don't think heaven hears you, and I definitely know that hell ain't hearing you right now. I need every believer to say, move, Lord. Come on, Khadijah. I, w I was riding as I went down yesterday. We had a problem with the van. If you can, if you, if you can't stand, you can sit down. But we had a problem with the van. That was one of the first things that happened. I got a call from Deacon saying that there's a problem with the van. And in the van next to the battery, there was a possum. Under no circumstance, this possum wanted to move. I told Deacon to lead a hood up. Deacon drove by there later on. The hood was down. Somebody closed it. Thinking we left it up by mistake. One thing that I can give my brother credit for is that he said, those possums ain't going to come out until the sun go down. So he knew that. He knew that. I got a, I got a possum problem on one of my houses right now. People can boss to that. And they live in the porch, but they only come out when the sun is going down. It's as if at every time he will poke it, it's set there. Every time he patted on the van, it's set there. It was not going to move. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going somewhere with this. It was not going to move under any condition. 
See, some of us will allow things to move. I see you, you hear me, you hear me, you hear me, you hear me. A lot of us, we will allow things and people to move us. When they come knocking on our door and saying things to us, we'll allow people to move us from where God has positioned us. But this thing will not move. See, the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, he will lift up a standard. I don't care what deacon did on that van. That possum said, I'm standing. Today, I occupy this van, and ain't nobody's going to move me out of it. Hallelujah. The thing is, what I'm trying to say to them, saying today, is that when you stand your ground, Every time the enemy knock at your spirit and try to rise up your ego, the Bible says after you have done all to stand. I need to know that there's some saints in here, people they sing, hallelujah, that don't mind standing. Under pressure, keep on standing. Hallelujah. You back up against the wall, keep on standing. Hallelujah. Your mind's a wreck. Just keep on. Hallelujah. You are here and moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you, cause you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, if you know it, help us say it, say way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the dark. My God, my God, that is who you are. Come on, help me say, you are a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. I 
scripture in a moment, but there's a song in my spirit this morning, God has smiled on me. I was thinking of my 
my um, uncle this morning that passed away about 10 years ago. And that was one of his favorite songs. God has smiled on me. Every day when we're going through tragedies, hardships, disappointments, God always smiled on us. He never turned his back on us. He's always there just when we need him the most. That's the God we serve. Because it says his mercies are new every morning, but his compassion never fails. Great, how many believe he's great, is thy faithfulness. God has smiled on me. He has said, me free oh, oh, oh. God is on me he's been good to me let me sing it one more time God has
know I heard a brother this morning. He was testifying by one of his friends who was one of his clients in the barber shop. He said this man was on his job as a truck driver and pulled into the depot. And he filled his truck up with gasoline and had a stroke at the pump. This man spent a year in the hospital because of the stroke. His body began to shut down, but the prayer of the righteous availed as much as people begin to pray. He said, a man is up talking on the phone. After a year being almost in a coma, God showed up. Reminds me of my father. Lying in the hospital after colon cancer. Had the surgery. And had a stroke after the surgery. And they said they never walk again. Said they never talk again. I come to tell you that God is good. My father's are walking every day. Still trying to say a word. Even if it's just the name of Jesus. Every morning's on the prayer line. Calling on the name of Jesus. Can't say nothing else but Jesus. So I come to tell you that God's been good. I don't know about you. But God is good. His mercy endures forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I get so much joy. Just to hear my father every day. They say, Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus. That's a simple prayer. He prays in the morning. Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus. See, that's a message for somebody here today. You may know how may not know how to pray. But if you call on the name of Jesus, Lord, help me. God, I need you. God will show up right where you are. He'll turn your midnight into day. He'll make a way out of nowhere. Hallelujah! Glory to God. You shouldn't have to come in the house of God. Have somebody pump and prime you to praise God. Because if you taste it and you see that God is good, the words that you want to praise Him in the storm in your life. You want to praise him in the troubles of life. You want to praise him even when you don't feel like it. You want to praise him anyhow. Because sometimes God is looking for an anyhow praise. I anyhow praise. Lord to God. Y'all just don't know. Testimonies just sets me on fire. I always think about myself. What if God had to change his mind about you? What if God had said, I'm not going to heal you? What if God said, I'm not going to deliver you? What if God changed his mind? But you know what? My Bible tells me that 
that the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. I can't help myself today, y'all. There's a fire on the inside. I am so hot right now. I've been hot ever since I walked in the doors. Because there's a fire on the inside. And it keeps on burning. I can't hold my peace. Glory to God. The fire is the all-consuming fire. See, when you get out the way, God will come in right where you are. He'll take your midnight. He'll turn it into day. He'll take the gloom and give you joy unspeakable and full of glory if you get out the way. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Deacon Cannon, the devil is a liar. Your grandson was coming out the hospital. Because the devil is a liar. Whatever your situation is today, God says the devil is a liar. When he says it's not going to happen, you look at the devil in his face and say, my Provide. He will make a way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What you stand for our scripture. Recently, but because of the prayers of the righteous, the devil trying to shut her voice up, trying to inflict her lungs with fluid, trying to kill her. But my mama keeps on pressing into God, and she told us what's going on. We begin to pray for her, and God did a miracle. This just happened a few days ago. Ever since she had a shot, a booster shot, trying to take her out again. So I come to tell you, if your soul not anchored in Jesus, when the devil come into your house and try to shut you up, God said you gotta break out and praise him. Hallelujah. Once you repeat after me. And Jesus answering and said to them, have faith, have faith in, God. in God. For verily, For verily. I say unto you I say unto that whatsoever that whosoever Shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. So, what you need to do right now is get in your mind what you're expecting God to do, and have faith that God can do it. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that you shall have them. Believe that you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father 
also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand praise. saying to myself with my hand on his shoulder Lord cover the enemy in the past two months has tried to take out five members of the family two of them being 14 years old barely even seen light but somebody say the devil is a lie <laughs> ah he tried but he been denied hallelujah young young we call him Zabi uh, is, uh, is his name Zabi or just Zabi Deviante, yeah. Amen. And a day before his birthday, the enemy tried to take him out. I believe we was, I think me and my wife, we was getting ready to go or we was doing something and we got the call out. Matter of fact, I was talking to Sandra Cannon when she was at her desk and she was on the phone and I could see the impression on her face and and then, you know, we all just dropped everything and we went right to where he was. Well, he wasn't there. He has been taken to the hospital. But when I got there, the mother, her, his mother was there. And, the, and, and, and what they were implying to her when she inquired, where did they take my son? The cop replied, It doesn't matter. He isn't here. And words like that, I can't remember every word. But it was some to the fact that she don't need to worry about it. He's not here. Why you need to know? Ain't, why you need to know? Ain't nothing you can do about it. He's not here right now. She was implying, I am the mother. And the more she implied that she's crying for Bruce and it just, they just didn't pay her no attention. And then finally someone came over and said to her what happened. And the thing is, every child that's especially raised by their mother, when something happened to that child, even if you're grown and your mama's still living, you want your mama. Can I get a witness today? Hallelujah. It's, it's just something about, I, I just need mama. I, I, I'm not asking for nobody else. I'm, I just need my mama. There's something about that motherly connection that if you can see mama's face. Ooh, anybody, anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? When you can, when, when you can just lock out of our mama's face, when you're hurting, it gives you some kind of strength in some kind of way. You find hope when mama has arrived. 
I know that to be true because I'm telling you. Mama knows her children. How many of y'all got kids? All the mothers, raise your hand. Raise your hand. You know each one of your children's voice. I don't care what them children, you can go into a concert. If your child called mama, I guarantee you, you can zero in. That's my child. That's my baby. Hallelujah. There's something about the voice. It, it, it's something about that voice of that child. And it, it goes along with the fathers too. If, we, if you heard your son's voice, your, your daughter's voice, you can distinguish out of every, everybody that could be calling their mama. But you would pick up on your son, your daughter. Ooh, it's a DNA. It's a blood, that bloodline link that links you to your parents. Amen. It's, it's, uh, we're going to move along. It's time to be blessed so we can get the next part of the service. Amen. God done some incredible things. Amen. I just asked the ushers to bring the basket up here to the front. Hallelujah. God has done some, in somebody say incredible things. Hallelujah. I know, I know a lot of, a lot of us was here on yesterday. A lot of us, let, uh, the heat got to a lot of us. I got a, I got a few texts on this morning that uh, some of us, weren't gonna, some of them weren't going to be able to make it because of the heat. Hallelujah. And I know it was incredibly hot. I, I sweated so hard on yesterday. I tell you. When I moved one of my shirts, water just ran right down my back. And I said, I got on light blue jeans and that ain't going to look right. <laughs> so I said, honey, come here, come here, come here. I, I, I needed to know from her that she see the wet spot behind my pants. I need to make sure my shirt was long enough to cover it up. Amen. But God, God did some incredible things. The songs that were sang, the people that were the people that were being blessed on yesterday was just incredible. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me. Uh, everybody got an envelope to withstand on today, and those of you that are watching via Facebook Live, I pray that you would go, if it's in your heart, to go through give up fire and give that way. Amen. Hallelujah. I, 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 I know it's a lot of a lot of us we use Giveify. A lot of us use this Giveify. I noticed that one of the things about is that we because a lot of us don't carry cash. A lot of us don't carry, I don't carry cash that much no more. And and because of that, we have other ways of being able to bless the ministry. And that's a blessing, amen. Because I, I, I hate, I, I used to hate being able to go there and I had a credit card or a bank card and I wasn't able to give because they had no cash. And, and a lot of churches started, you know, doing the ATMs in their churches and stuff like that. A lot of churches started doing that so people can go and get money out of the ATM and, and be able to give it to the church. Uh, so they can be a blessing unto the church. But now that we got other ways, they got Cash App, Giveify. They got a lot of different ways now that have made it a lot easier, amen, to be able to give, amen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come up with a, I got another idea that I've seen on uh other ministries, how they do it in a form of a form of being able to give. I seen something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see how we can get into that in, in, in uh, making that a part of it. Amen. I don't know where Bishop Jones is going right now, but he's walking down that aisle doing something. I don't know. He's going to get an envelope? Okay. <laughs> He's going to get an envelope. She's tying his shoes up for him. Amen. I guess.
gave him his first church hat. He thought it was a cowboy hat. He was walking around going, Yahoo! I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> okay, Jeffrey. Amen. Jeffrey, take it to take it to mommy. Take it to mommy. Take it to mommy. Take it to mommy. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Everyone standing on today. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How you been doing, man? Oh, that's good. That's good. So you got a guest with you. That's your brother. Hey, y'all do look kind of like, I almost thought he was your son, but I'm like, nah, he couldn't be a son. They close, they look close in age, amen. Amen, hallelujah. That's a blessing, you know, amen. Hallelujah. I want y'all to follow the direction of the usher as she come down your aisle or direct you, amen. You know, Deacon Cannon, he came down here the other day and he, brought some things and I was able to get from him some old clippers see the old clippers right here these are some old hair clippers the way these clippers work they work like this these are them old ones right here boy you have to do that real 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 fast if you know he's awesome. something they want God to do. Just point your hand this way. Just, I just need, a, just need your hand pointed this way. Mm. Spirit of the living God, we thank, we praise you, we glorify you. I'm asking God that you will bless every giver and every believer in this place right now. God, I'm asking that you would give them whatever they desire according to your will and purpose over their lives. Open up doors that men have closed. Open up windows and pour into their lives new hope, new joy. Restore unto them 
those things the enemy has taken from them. For your word said the kingdom suffered violent, but the violent taken back by force. We're taking back everything the enemy has stole from us. And God, we're giving you praise and we're giving you glory. In your son Jesus' name, God, bless this offering in the purpose, every purpose in which it's going to be used. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. Somebody say, it's mine. It's mine. Now I want you to remain standing and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need a little bit more room. Hallelujah. Just, I don't think it just spread your arms out. You know you ain't got no space. Hallelujah. I want you to repeat out to me, Lord, Lord enlarge, enlarge my territory. My territory. Lord, Lord, enlarge, enlarge my territory. Territory. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I, I, honey, I need you to do something for me. If you will walk over there and put your hand on that wall, and I'll hold my hand on this wall. If you would do that for me. Somebody give God praise. She got a beautiful smile. Now I want everybody to say, Lord, Lord, enlarge, enlarge my territory. My territory. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, Deacon, put your hands on that door. Pastor Charles, put your hands on that wall. Now I want everybody to say, Lord, Lord, enlarge, enlarge my, territory. my territory. Now won't God do it? Yes, he will. Now won't God do it? Yes, he will. Now give God a praise. Woo! He's about to do big things. Lay your hands on yourself and say, big things, big things, big things. Work! 
Stars. Woo! Nah, 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 nah. So you telling me we gonna be bowing down to you? Nah, 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 today. I know you didn't say that. The devil is a liar. Let's take this fella with this coat of many coats uh, and less colors uh, and let's get rid of them. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Every dreamer that has made it to another level, you got Apple, you got Amazon, Starting in their garages. But don't knock me because I'm starting a business out of my garage. Don't knock me because I'm a spirit man with some old televisions. Uh, because those people that started that, uh, people, hallelujah, that look down on them. I'm now looking for them uh, to put money on their tables. Uh, I, I don't care. See, because I'm going to tell you something. When God gives you a vision, he's not just giving it to anybody just to have a vision. He's giving it to a person that's a visionary. That they will take that vision and cause that vision to work. They'll lay it out and put it on paper. In every mistake, they will start dotting down. That didn't work. 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 And they'll knock down as they'll keep putting down how many things didn't work. But one day, because they waited on the Lord, and one day, because they kept on. See, see, look, Pastor Charles. They didn't allow the first mistake to discourage them. And when they got down to mistake number 1,199, it still didn't discourage them. All it did was encourage them uh, that I keep making mistakes. Uh, but if I ever give up, uh, I'll never... I'll never cause what I've been working on. I'll never see the finished product if I give up. Did I hear somebody say never give up? Somebody shall never give up. So, I, I, I don't know if I was hearing it right. I was thinking I was I was hearing something on TV once. One of the shark, that one shark, the shark show, where people present something to him. The person that that had the ring doorbell presented that, and they didn't really invest in that. The Shark Tank. Yeah. So now the ring doorbell, it's on another level now. So the guy said every time he see the guy that started that ring doorbell, he, he would see him in a party somewhere. And the young man that started it would always come up to him and say, I see, I told you. Hallelujah. I told you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So a lot of times we'll look at things. And the thing is, you can't just sell out. And because he didn't sell out to what they were offering, he still made it to another level. I can say, how many people here got a ring doorbell? How many people got some kind of ring app or something like that? I raised my hand to it. Hallelujah. I'm not advertising that. But I, I've watched for it. It does work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give God praise. 
I, 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 I got a word for y'all on today, but I'm had a praise team come up and sing another song. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for them. Annou oh, announcements, come on up here, announcements. We're going to let the announcements come. And Khadija, y'all practice this song? Y'all practice this one? Okay, so I'm going to ask Rodney if you would let them sing and then come up after they sing, okay? We got to start getting you here for practice. Maisha, we got to start getting them here for practice, okay? All right. Hallelujah. Because one person, one thing I know about Rodney is that Rodney would get up here and play if you don't know the song. Somebody give Rodney a hand praise. I told him, I said, man, look, I got to give you this shirt. I bought that shirt. It say Triple X. When I bought it some years ago, it say Triple X. When I got it, I said, the devil is a lie. If triple X this small, then what size am I really in? <laughs> Amen. So when he put that shirt on, I said, it's got to be a small. It say triple X, but it got to be a small. But somebody give, give let's give Ronnie another hand praise for his, uh, his, his ambition. Amen. Go ahead. Amen, everybody. Our announcements are as follows. Um, every first and second Sunday is, I mean, I'm sorry, every first Sunday at 10 a.m. is minister, deacon, and deaconess class, but it's not going to, uh, yep, it's going to be next week still for you, okay? So next week, we'll see you guys at 10 a.m., amen? From the pastor and wife, um, they want to thank everyone who participated in whatever way in the block party, back to school block party, it was truly a blessing to see so many um, helping Redeeming Faith Fellowship Church bless the community. Amen. Amen. That was that was just a blessing to see so many people being blessed. Someone bought the cell phone. Got a flower case. You know who it is. Ricky, okay, okay, well, Ricky, if you listen, we got your phone, come up here and pick it up, somebody give you a call, well, they can't give you a call, right, <laughs> we got your phone, okay, we'll get it to you, Ricky, um, Nerf Night will be held Friday, August 19th, here at Redeem Faith Fellowship, what time? Six o'clock, and there's going to be pizza and juice. Come out and have fun, young people. And if you get here early, you can play basketball. So it's just going to be a fun night for the youth. So come out and have fun. Enjoy yourself. Church van, if you ride in the church van, please refrain from eating in it. We need to keep the van clean to make sure that um, you're cleaning up behind yourselves and your children. Amen. Food pantry is open every second and fourth Tuesday, but if you are in need of food before then, please contact Deaconess Davis, raise your hand, or you can stop at the church any weekday, any weekday um, before 2.30. If you have any non-perishable foods that you want to donate, feel free to donate it. A lot of people donate and they put the stuff on the table. The community really uses that table and they'll come and bring stuff and, you know, so it's got something, clothes, things, make sure the clothes is, are clean and things of that nature. If you're just going to set it out there, if it's not raining, the community, they come out, they exchange. So it, it's a blessing to have those tables right there in that corner. Um, Redeem Faith Fellowship Men's Prayer Breakfast um, is every second Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon. Um, if you want to get food for the mind, body, and soul, redeemed place will be the place to be. Redeem faith will be the place to be. The next breakfast will be August 13th. If you want to donate to the breakfast, please see either Minister Harris, who is not here, or Pastor Emery. Amen. There will be no candy sales today after church. Are, are there any other announcements? I 
I just wanted to say that um, on yesterday, you know, God is good. And let me tell you how I know what we did on yesterday was great. And what it's about is love and sharing and joy, giving people joy and love. The little girl that won the bike, after she won the bike, I went down to the um, end of the corner down here to take, take a break. So I'm, I see her on the bike and I see her whole family. And I'm noticing she is the oldest of seven kids because mom is holding one and the other ones are with her. But she's on her bike and she's smiling and she's looking at it and she's smiling and she's looking at it. And, and little Sonia said, oh, it's got pegs on it. She said, oh, it do. <laughs> and that, I mean, it made me, my heart smile to see that we was able to help somebody in this community feel good and be happy. I remember as a little girl, wanting this big red bike, couldn't get the bike, end up with the bike. But I remember how I felt, how good it made me feel. So I just want to say good job on yesterday that we actually uh, spread love. Amen. Amen. Are there any other announcements? I'll have physical therapy that day, so I don't think you need to make any complaints. Have to what? Okay, we'll discuss that. We're gonna we're gonna say everybody rise because when we got the therapy on Tuesday, I'm just I'm just being silly. I apologize, <laughs> but okay. Um, are there any guests? If so, would you please stand? Amen. Good to see you here, Ari. Thank you for coming. Um, and being the other young man that Pastor acknowledged earlier, yep. Thank you guys for coming out to fellowship with us on today. Amen. These are your announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand praise. As the praise team come to take the stage, were you invited by someone? Or are you just Khadija? Yeah, I kind of faith. Okay. Oh, this is your daughter. Okay. All right. I asked her a question yesterday, uh, and while they were in the car with us. And I told, I told my, uh, my daughter, Tori, and my granddaughter, Peyton, I said, what's one thing y'all got to do before y'all get in that pool? I asked her daughter that. I asked her daughter that, and she said, they got to clean up their room. And she, she ain't even made it to the house. <laughs> and I was like, so enough. <laughs> I was like, so enough. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah, 
say you have rescued you have rescued my life you have rescued my life and i'm never
You're my redeemer. Hallelujah. You're my healer. Hallelujah. You're my way maker. Hallelujah. Say you have rescued. You have rescued my life. Oh, you If God rescued your life, you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life.
don't even look that way, Lord, said I'm never. And I'm never going back. One more time, say I'm never going back. And I'm never going back. Hallelujah. If you're not going back, come on, give God praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't have time to go back to my sin. I don't have time to go back to my mess. You brought me out, Jesus. I don't want to go back to my spiritual prison. I want to worship you, Lord. I want to worship you, Jesus. You've been mighty, mighty good. I want to glorify your name. You've been mighty, mighty, mighty good. I could have lost my mind a long time ago. But because of your grace, but because of your mercy, Excuse me. 
you look beyond my mess. Hallelujah. And you said, I'll pick up all that waste, that life that you wasted, so that I can save you. You rescued me. Somebody need to give God praise. Come on, let's give God a great big praise. Let's give God a great, great big giant, giant praise. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I'm going to the book of 1 Samuel today. If you get 1 Samuel. In order to, in order for most of us to get a deeper understanding of this, we have to read the whole chapter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain it to you in depth. What I don't read. Some would say that I, I, I love to. When I, when I read the word, I, I see the story, I see an outline, I see, I see everything about it as it's like as if I'm right there. Amen. When you have the word, if you don't have the word or Bible with you standing, we have it up on the uh, monitors. And those of you that are at home, we're, we're, we're going to be reading again in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Chapter 17, and I am going to, w if I could, employ Pastor Charles for a moment. I want to focus on just a couple things. But before he read, I want, I want to pray. Spirit of the living God, I thank you and I praise you and I magnify you. I decrease that you may increase in me. I ask that you will worthy lips of clay that I may speak to your people. I am but a vessel. Use me, God. How you see fit to use me. Somebody's watching. Somebody's here today seeking a word from you. I'm asking that God that you will unlock the mysteries of your word and cause them to manifest in my spirit so 
that I may help your people out of their situations. You are God all by yourself. Somebody say, send your word, Lord. Send your word, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Charles, if you would, I would if you would read verse 7 for me. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 7. And the staff of the spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear head weighed 600 shekels of iron, one bearing a shield went before him. Keep reading. Read verse 8. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and ye the servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. Stop right there. He said, Choose your man for you. And let him come down to me. How many of y'all are down today? How many? Come on now. How many of y'all are down today come to on. take this thing to another level? And I, I, need, I need to look at, are, are you down to go to the next level? Are you down to go to the next level? Are you ready to go to the next level? How many of you are down today? Hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> Listen, read the next one, then we're going to go down to verse 20, uh, 17. Go ahead, read the next If he one. be able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then ye shall be our servants and serve us. Listen, listen, now go down to verse uh, 17 for me. And Jesse said unto David his son, take now for thy brethren and eat from of the parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp unto thy, to thy brethren. Keep going. Verse and 18. Carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousands and look how thy brethren fare and take their pledge. Amen. Now verse 20 says, go ahead. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him and he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight, to the fight, and shouted for the battle. Now listen, listen, listen. I want to use for a thought today, and I used it before. Somebody say, I ain't the one. I ain't the one. Ooh, look at your neighbor say, I ain't the one. I ain't the one today. You didn't pick with the wrong person. I ain't the one. You may take your seat, amen. Hallelujah. I ain't the one. Hallelujah. How many of y'all been tried, hallelujah, by somebody? Every time somebody try you, I want to say, I ain't the one, and then just hang up the phone on them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I ain't the one. Not today, because I ain't the one. Hallelujah. <laughs> my God, my God, my God. I, I, I love this. I love this text. And, 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 and when we were up there, when Charles read up here in verse 8, down towards the end, he said, and let him come down to me. The Lord said, I want you to ask my people, is anybody down today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, have you ever had those friends say, man, you're down to go play some ball? You're, you're down to go to this club today? Are you down? Are you down? And a lot of us will say, yeah, but God said, are you down to come down today? Are you down to come down today? Are you down to fight this battle today? Are you down to go to the next level? To hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I love, I love when I talk, when we, when we read about this text, First Samuel chapter 17, we got to understand the mindset of David. We got to understand the mindset of David. David ain't no different from who we are. But the only difference between us and David is David has been anointed. 
David was anointed to be king. He's no different. A lot of, a lot of people look down on us. A lot of people don't think uh, that you were ever going to amount to anything. They looked at how they looked at how you were positioned as a young person and look at the things you indulged in as a little kid, and they begin to make their own perception about who you was going to be. They begin to say, oh, you'll never amount to anything because you're just like your dad or anything like that. If your dad were no good, then he's not going to be no good. Hallelujah. Or if, if, if you know, vice versa, if it's with the female, if their mother were no good, then they're going to say the female ain't going to be no good. It's because they're going off of what it look like with that parent. Hallelujah. But one of the things you got to understand about David that made him unique is that God chose him. You hear what I'm saying? God chose him. And, and one of the things that I thank God for is that God chose me for this position. So therefore, every battle that's set before me, that if God chose me to fight that battle, then I already won that battle. Anybody understand what I'm talking about right there? If, if God chose you for the position, so every battle that's set before you, you already won that battle. The problem is a lot of us, we back down when situations come up before us. We back down, hallelujah. But when you know, when you have been in training like David been in training, you got to understand one thing that David, uh, he already went through the fear factor of life uh, because he had already fought the lion and the bear, the two largest and most dangerous animals that man can ever encounter You don't know the hell and, and, and the audacity the lion and the bear already tried to take me out. He not only tried to take me out, but he tried to snatch at one of the sheep that I was attending. I'm going to tell you something right now. I know we got some mothers in here that they wish the devil would. Try to come and snatch my child off and around me. We got some fathers in here. I wish a devil would. <laughs> so, 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 the thing is, David, the, 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 the thing I love about David, David was in training for the purpose and the position that he had presented before him. Nobody becomes great with a snap of a finger. A king would train his son to be the next one in line. Hallelujah. David was already being trained to lead sheep. God elevated him to the next level by leading mankind. But in order for you to be a great leader, you have to start somewhere. You have to learn how to deal with people on their levels, and you have to be able to deal with giants on their level. And if you can only deal with people on this level, you'll never be able to deal with a giant on this level. God was not, re God was not recruiting David to be a chicken. God was, God was recruiting David to have an attitude of being on another aptitude. Hallelujah. So when David comes in on the scene, he's not on the same level as you and I. He's already up here. I don't think some of y'all hear me right now. Hallelujah. Because God has been trying to pull you from the level you're at to the next level because See, here's the thing. Here's the thing I love about David. David wasn't distracted and intimidated by what people said. Ooh. David wasn't there. Hallelujah. God said, hey, that there's Davids in you if you don't allow the enemy to intimidate you by what they say. When you can sit back and study your course, when the devil is up there talking about you and putting you down, hallelujah, you're walking like David walked. Let me talk a little bit more. Hallelujah. 
Now we got to understand, David is still not on the scene. He's still not on the scene. He's not on the scene. He's not on the scene when he said, allow one of them to come down. He's not even on the scene. He haven't even heard that discussion. He hasn't even heard that discussion. David, when David came down to give his brother something to eat, he was eavesdropping. Woo, hallelujah. I, I know we got some people in here that, that don't mind eavesdropping every once in a while. They'll sit back and they'll, they'll listen to your conversation. See what you're talking about. Hallelujah. But one thing about David, 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 David when he heard, when he heard, and when we go down, let me read a little bit. I'm going to read verse 23 for me. Pastor Charles, verse 23. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and he spake, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Listen, verse 23. Now he's on the scene. Verse 22, he arrives mm -hmm. and leaves his carrier with the keeper of the carriage and ran. David, David, David wasn't the one that took his time. Hallelujah. He was the one that ran. He ran, he ran, he ran into trouble. He, 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 was the, he wasn't the kind of person that, that waited for orders to come on in. He wasn't the one that, that waited to be invited in. He ran into the battlefield. Hallelujah. I, I got a responsibility. My daddy gave me orders uh, to take my brother something to eat. But he, I'm going to show you how God worked this thing out. David went down for one thing, but he got involved with another thing. Anybody ever, ever went somewhere and they had plans to do one thing, then all of a sudden you're involved in something else? You're involved in some drama, hallelujah, some stuff that you didn't even start, hallelujah, you don't even know nothing about, hallelujah, oh my God. You found yourself, you found yourself trying to fight for your life, but yet and still you comes out on top? Whew. Verse 24 said, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and they were so afraid. That's one thing I don't like. I don't like to hang out with no chickens. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, 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 see, if you're going to hang with me, I need to have confidants on my side. I need to know that the person that's hanging with me is down for whatever. I need to know that if the enemy comes in and try to pick with me, hallelujah, I need that person like my wife, that my wife will stand behind me and say, you know what, it's whatever. And then I'll say, I ain't the one today. See, then already gave me the sign. It's whatever. And then I ain't the one. Somebody say, I ain't the one. So, <laughs> ooh, anybody ever had to say, it's whatever? Anybody ever had to say that? Look, so, so David, he's not even in the army. He's not even, he, he's, 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 he, he ain't even got any, no, no military armor on. But he was bold enough to speak to them. Verse 26 says, and David spake to the men that stood by him saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? Ooh, I'm not just looking for elevation. I'm looking for appreciation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, 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 and take it away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the army of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to this man that killeth him. 
David might have had his eyes on something, but God had a bigger plan. See, that's what a lot of us, we got our eyes on something, but God got a much bigger plan. How? Hallelujah. We may see something that we may like, but God got a much bigger plan. Hallelujah. You may get that as a reward, but the reward that I have for you is far more greater than what you can ask or think. Ooh, we serve a God that will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can act or even think. Yeah, I'm just going to read. In Elab, his eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men. And Elab's anger was kindled against David. Ooh, and he said, why cometh thou down hither? And with whom have thou left thy few sheep? He's talking about him. Whom have thou left thy few sheep? Hallelujah. In the wilderness, I know thy pride in thy northernness of thy heart. For thou art come down that thou mayest see the battle. What? Are you serious? You think I came down here to see a fight? You think that what? Wait a minute! You 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 talking? What what? Are you you got any? You ever had to tell somebody you got your nerve telling me what you think I'm about to do? Hallelujah! You don't even know the plan. You don't even know the thoughts. You don't even know you have the audacity to tell me the reason why I came down here. But if David wanted to, for your information. Daddy sent me down here to give y'all something to eat because he knew that y'all might be hungry. But since y'all up here talking about me and telling me what I'm down here for, I tell you what, might as I go home and take my bread and take all this food back home. I don't know how they talk then, but anyways. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so we find, we find, we find David here. And David said, Ooh, and David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? Ooh, you getting on my nerves. How long, anybody I've just had to tell somebody, you just make, you just making me sick right now. I don't even know what you're talking about. Hallelujah. So David, so David, here's David right here. David, the Bible says, and he turned from him towards another and spake after the same manner and the people answered him again after the former manner. David said, you know what? I'm not studying what you said, bro. Now let me go and continue to talk of this person. Because you're my big brother. I see you running from what I fight every day. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I, I see you running from the very thing that I have to deal with every day. So those few sheep that you are telling me, talking about me about, those few sheep are alive today because of me. Those few sheep are alive today because when the lion and the bear came up to sniff them, to take them from me, I stood up and I took out my rag and my rock and I smoked them. And when I came to them, I cut their necks off and I held their hands up in victory. So, 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 listen. So, 
in verse 32 says, And David said to Saul, Let no man heart fail. I'm going I'm, I'm to give you some orders. I'm going to give you some orders, honey. Let no man heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine because I am not the one. I am not the one. Anybody ever been tired, tired of certain things, and you just got fed up and just like, okay, I just, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm not the one today. You, you, you chose the wrong day to come to me because today I am not the one. Mm. Listen, listen. So, Saul tells David, and he, 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 so it says, and Saul said to David, verse 20, 33, and says, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. Everybody always look at your stature. They look at your status. They judge you by those certain characteristics. And then all they look down on you, and by them looking at you and reading you, they limit your possibilities. They limit your possibilities. Mm -hmm, they put a name on it. They limit your possibilities. Here's the thing right here. When they limit your possibilities and tell you no, if you allow what they said to you to limit you, then everything God has trained you for is now collapsing. You cannot come to me or to God and have a plan and tell God what you want to do and then deny him access to open a door for you. You hear me? You hear me? One of the things I always tell Anthony, I say, Anthony, just keep on going. Everything going to work out for you. Keep going. Keep, keep striving. Keep going at it. You know, when I first met him, he, I knew what he was, I, he told me about his vision and what he was trying to do. And I said, it's going to happen. Just keep going. And he's keeping on going. A lot of doors are opening for him now. Nobody that ever made it to anything never gave up. They felt like it, but they never did it. Because every time you feel like giving up, I'm going to tell you what happens. That's just a boost of energy that's waiting to explode in you to push you to the next level. Ooh, let, me show, let me read some more. Let me read some more. Verse 36 says, <clears throat> this is David. He started bragging. I'm almost through. He started bragging because when God give you bragging rights, <laughs> anybody, any, any, anybody understand what I'm talking about right there? This is what I put right here. I said, when God gives you bragging rights, you can talk Talk about what you didn't all. You can talk about your status in life. When God gives you bragging rights, when you know you already achieved certain things in life, you can talk about it with confidence. David begins to talk about some stuff. He says, Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine be as, be as one of them. I don't look at him like Uh, just a giant man. I'm looking at him like a bear and a lion. Because when we start looking at people like this and that, it begins to limit us. If you saw an elephant, an elephant will see you not as much as a threat. You're not a threat to an elephant because you're small in stature. But if you came down there in something as big as an elephant, you now look like a threat. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. 
elephant, they are not hungry for man's meat. They're not hungry for you. Now, if you came up against a lion, you better get ready. Because now you look like lunch. <laughs> but certain animals wouldn't consider you a threat because of your size. But certain animals will look at you like food if you allow them. So, he said, thou servants throw both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine should be as one of them. Seeing he has defiled the army of the, you see David keep on saying the living God. The living God, the living God, the living God. And he, you know, I'm, I'm going to put it like this. On God, I'm going to take him down. <laughs> Any, anybody ever use that word on God? I'm for real this time. On God, this, I'm, I'm just throwing this out because we use it as slang. But David is putting this on God. On God, I'm going to take this giant down. On God, honey, we can make it to this next level. On God, church, we can build this building debt free. On God, we can do this thing. On God, we can get that new promotion. On God, we can do it. Hallelujah. See, see here's the thing. A lot of y'all see, y'all may be laughing, but on the real. If somebody came to you and said, Jeff, on God, I can outplay you in this piano. You're going to say, try it. On God, David, I can do, I, I can play those drums better than you. On, on God, I can put you to shame, Anthony. Hallelujah. On God, hallelujah, I can praise dance better than all y'all praise dancers. Look at Tori like, yep, bring it. But here's the thing. When Dave, every time David put God on something, something happens. Now, Saul, he tries to, he tries to get David ready by taking off his armor and putting him on his armor. David is not used to that. See, so often, I'm going to say this to a lot of you, y'all got to listen up real close. So often we'll try to use what somebody else is good at to try to make it to the next level. I can't, I can't make it to the next level on how you made it, honey. I can't make it to the next level on how Pastor Charles did it. Because if I'm going to try to make it to the next level as you did it, April, Prophet is young, Miss Davis, Dick and Cannon, I can't make it with what y'all made it with. Why? Because if I need to make it to the next level, which y'all which y'all made it with, I gotta be willing to wear y'all shoes. I gotta be willing to wear y'all shoes. And Anthony, I'm not. I'm, I don't want to go through what you've been through, brother, to get to where you're at. If I could, I'll be where you're at. I want to be there, but I don't want to go through the hell to get there. So when I say, how you got there, and you start telling me, I'm like, no. Nah. No, nah, bro. You can have that. Because I can't train every day. I can't play that piano. I can't play that drum like that. I can't wave that flag like that. I can't do what you do. I can't praise that. I can't do those things. I can't do those things because I'm good at what I'm good at. God trained me differently. God trained me differently. Now listen, if I wanted to hang out with some people that I knew that really had my back, that I know I was about to go into the lion's den, I can handpick the people in this room right now I know that's down for whatever. But David didn't have that option. David didn't have that option. David stood alone. He had one person that nobody else believed in but him. It seemed that way. They knew that God was on their side, but they didn't trust him. But Dave was like, 
this uncircumcised Philistine that devoured the army of the living God. And the reason why David said living God, he was pretty much putting their God down because they worshiped dead gods. Listen, y'all catching that? They worship images and objects. So David keep making the phrase living God. Because in fact, he knew that in order for him to beat this giant or beat that lion and that bear, he knew that there had to be a living God. Hallelujah. Because there's no way possible David it could have went against those animals, those creatures, or a giant like Goliath and beat him by himself. I'm going to tell you another thing. Listen, real, listen, 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 listen. Let me go up right here. Verse 40 says this. He says, and he stood and took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of a brook and put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a, a strap, a strip, Scrap, and his sling was in his hand, and he stripped, and he drew, and he drew near to the Philistine. Listen, I need y'all to get ready for this right here. Everybody standing in this church, too. I need y'all. I need. I need. I need y'all to say it one more time. I ain't the one. David took, first David takes off all of Saul's armor. And he says in verse 39, he says, I have not proven them. And David put them off him. So David takes his staff, he goes down to a brook. Now, most people, most people, if they're about to go into a battle, they're not going to battle, they're not going to go down to the battle empty handed. David knew better than that. David knew, David had enough sense to know that if I, before I go out to this battlefield, I need to, I need to be loaded. Because I ain't the one today to be messed with. I came down here for one thing, and now I got to take down this giant. God says, some of us going to go home today just to relax. But before you relax, you got to take down some giants. Hallelujah. Before you can even get to your bed and rest assurance, with assurance, you got to take down some giants. And those giants ain't going away easily. Those giants going to try to run you up out your house. But you got to say to yourself, with a 40 eye. So God want to equip you today. He says, verse 41 says, And the Philistine came to draw near unto David. And the man that bare the shield with went before him. We got to understand again that when we're fighting devils, we're fighting everybody that's with that giant. David knew that, look, I have to work this thing out. And I'm going to have to make this thing work. Hallelujah. He knew that I'm not going on a battlefield by myself because that same God that was with me when I went up against that lion and I went up against that bear is going to be the same God that's going to be with me now. So listen, 
that Philistine, he comes, he draws nigh to, to David. And when the Philistine looked, see, here's, here's it again right here. People ain't going to want to mess with you because they misjudge you right when they see you. Hmm. I would have never known Rodney would have had an interest in playing those bundles, those things right there, those instruments right there. They sat in front of that organ for at least two years. Never known that Rodney would have been interested. Rodney came here and said, I would, can I play those? I said, go right ahead. And every Sunday he'd been getting on those things, those bundles, those bundles right there. Now listen. And the Philistines said to David, Am I a doll that thou cometh to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Now here's the thing right here. Now you're talking about my size and my stature. Talking about what I'm coming out here to fight you with. You're trying to belittle me. I come out here for one purpose. Verse 45 says, Then said David to the Philistine. He began to talk about him. Thou cometh to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. Listen to what David says right here. He said, but, somebody say but. I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. I see some of y'all caught that. He, he said, but I come to thee. In the name of the Lord of hosts, of the, the God of the army of Israel, whom thou defiled. Look, the only thing David had in his hand was the sling at this time. That's the only thing he has in his hand is a sling. At this time, he had this sling. It's not loaded. It's not, he's not winding up, ready to take him out. He's not, he's, he's not preparing for none of that. All he has in his hand is just the sling. Mm. David begins to speak some more. He said, this day will I, will the Lord deliver thee. He said, this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. He goes on and says, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give, give thy caucus caucuses to the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Hallelujah. Somebody say I ain't I ain't the one I'm going to say this one more thing. Every time David took out anything, when we talk about our Lord and Savior, we, we will call him a what? A rock? 
He's that rock that builders refuse to use. I believe that every time David fought every battle against every beast, he went and picked up that rock that the builders refused to use. I don't think some of y'all hear me right now. Because what was behind that rock was the Lord. Now just think about it. Now we can pull back and we have used stone to take down buildings. We have yearn, learned to, to launch mount big boulders and take down walls. We have learned those things over years. We have used rocks to win battles. But now we find David up against a giant and he learned how to use the rock, a stone, to take down a beast. Not only a beast, now I'm going to use this same stone to take down this giant. Look, look. What I like about it, what I like about it, what I like about it, Minister Young, is that he said, I'm going to take your sword. I, I, I'm going to take, take what you was going to use on me, and I'm going to cut your head off. So... Listen, in my closing, I, I just want you just lift up your hands in this place today. I want to pray over you and I want you to believe that God is about to do something great. I'm going to give you an assignment. I know I've given you assignments to be extra. 